Hello and welcome to To The Final Bell, the official Geelong Cats podcast. It is great to have you with us again this week. We are brought to you each week by our friends at Morris, personal finance solutions, expert advice and finance specialists all in one place. We are going to dissect the Cats and Fremantle game. We're going to look forward to a monster clash Saturday night against Port Adelaide. We're going to talk maybe a couple of ins with a couple of players going to be missing through injury. And to do all of that with me, as it is every single week, it's my great pleasure in welcoming Meg McDonald. Meg Mac, how are you? Um, Well, thanks, Lingy. It is a gorgeous day as we look over GMHBA Stadium. And at this time of year, particularly for me in the women's program, we start thinking... You know, it's almost 20 degrees today, our footy's around the corner, we're usually looking forward to finals, so we'll have a chat about whether that's whether that's in our future, but I'm, I'm feeling good and, you know, a few more days have passed since the game, so um, I'm, yes. I'm back up. Yes, we are bringing you this one a little bit later just because of a couple of uh, little scheduling things between all of us, but we're back together, we're here to talk footy. Just quickly, you're ramping up, the pre-season's been going well from all reports, but uh, match play, match sim, and then some yeah, packing matches yeah. on the so horizon? We've been doing sort of full quarters against ourselves on the weekends for our main sort of training sessions. We've got – we're headed to Vic Park Saturday week to um, take on the Pies. I'm not actually sure whether that's open to the public yet. That's a to be confirmed. We, we will have more info on that next and week on then, the pod. That's right. And then Adelaide um, Oval to play Adelaide in our official practice game, which I think we are hoping to get live streamed. That will also confirm that as well. But I actually have some great news for you in terms of the women's space. The Irish gals have landed. So ah, our full squad is fantastic. here. Fantastic. And the red-headed Ashling Maloney, who's wearing the 45, I can officially report that Lingy is sticking. It's stuck. <laughs> I, I am, one session I am, in, it's... I am honoured. I am deeply honoured. I don't know if that's a good thing Not for her. Oh, well, is it's she a good happy thing for with you. That? I had to defend her on Tuesday night and I was like, right, I'm just going to have to rejig my round one team because very good. Wow, that's the fantastic. The movement. Excellent. Um, um, any living with you? Is it who, was someone moving in with you? Yeah, so Rachel, who's our existing um, Irish gal, she arrived in last night. So I had, I've done some housework in the past <laughs> seven days, um, but all is well now. Are you coping all right with having a housemate? Because sometimes well, it can be I've nice living alone. Well, I've been for like 12 hours. Um, yeah, no, it's great. I think it'll be help me be a little bit more accountable. I <laughs> did buy myself a brand new coffee machine. I did consider hiding it, but... It's okay. I trust that she'll look after things. Look after, clean it right, do everything right. Just, yep, yep, very nice. Yep. Uh, very good. Well, that's exciting. That's uh, mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah, I'm quite honoured. The Lingy nickname, that's nice. In the 45. Yeah. I, uh, I, I love the current men's 45, so I'm keen on yep. barracking for the, uh, the women's 45. Um, let's get to the game. Uh, it wasn't a great result, as we know, as all Cats fans know, against Fremantle on the weekend, going down by seven points. Um, it was a strange game, really, because we, we didn't really get our game going and Freo didn't really get their game going and it was a bit of an arm wrestle at times and then just a couple of, well, one in particular outstanding goal from Fremantle oh, no. just broke the deadlock. Didn't it? And I, I agree. That first half, I'm thinking, oh, no, not Brisbane again. Like this sort of very weird, low-scoring um, defences sort of seeming to be on top. You know, we, I think, in that first quarter had, you know, our aerial game going in the back line, our intercept go- game going, and we possibly didn't capitalise. And it sort of continued a bit a bit iffy for the rest of the game. For the rest of the game, yeah. And a couple of unfortunate ones out of it as far as injuries go. No. Um, Tom Hawkins and Mark Blitzarves both doing hamstrings and both doing their first hamstrings. Oh, um, no. uh, the report, Simon Lloyd, uh, GM of footy of the Cats, uh, has spoken about it. Um, and no doubt a lot of Cats fans would have tuned into that given how important those two players are. Um, Tom, I think, is going to get back running pretty quickly from his. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark might take a little bit longer, but aiming to be ready for uh, perhaps for finals, which is exciting. So what it does provide, Meg, is an opportunity not only for a couple of players to come in and replace those two, almost irreplaceable players, but there is an of opportunity. Course, of course. But also as a whole, I-, I wonder with Chris Scott and the coaching group of – no Mark Blitzarves to play that hybrid role, no Tom Hawkins to play that key yeah. forward role. Get creative with the way the team looks and yeah. perhaps plays. 
Absolutely. I know we've had some um, really impressive performances from um, the AFL listed players who've been playing in the VFL and uh, with a few of them coming in, the mix-ups, I mean, yes, they're necessitated, but it's important to see opportunity um, even this late in the season with, you know, what, what the team could look like. So who are you thinking? What, what, we've sort of got a, we've got a ruck situation to cover, or a second ruck situation yeah. to cover. Did, did I see – I almost had to um, do the old rub my eyes and look mm. again when I saw Gary Rowan um, Gary go in Rowan. the ruck for a little bit on the weekend. You were good to have caught it because it took me a few CBs before. I thought, oh, my gosh, that's Gary. Yeah, that's – Gaz. It, does he do it again as that back up to Reese, or is it – Asava comes back. I know Asava's played the majority of the year down back and learning mm. that role, but we know in the past mm. Sav's been able to be a really adequate um, backup ruckman yeah. at times. W- which way do you reckon they go? I possibly think maybe they bring Sav in for it only because um, Hawk's now missing as well. I think maybe yep. if he was, you know, if he had his presence in the forward line, um, Gary could stay up in the middle. But then again, maybe our forward line just becomes. Super mobile. Maybe there are some smaller types in there. Um, maybe Shannon Neal comes in. He kicked was it three goals, and he's looking really, um, really exciting. So um, he's not. He's not at all small. So no, <laughs> we'll he's not. But um, that does lead to the fact that the VFL had a great performance on mm. the weekend. A dominant performance, thrashing the Northern Bull Ants by my maths isn't great, but that's ninety, says 90 points. points. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Shannon Neal did kick three goals, but also one thing I look for a, a key position player is. I know sometimes because of opportunity, key position is three goals from eight disposals and four marks. Okay, great. They've made the most of whatever opportunity they had. But I worry when it's just that. What I love to see when I look at Shannon Mm -hmm. Neal is 21 disposals, 11 marks. So it means... He's some getting serious presence. Yeah, he's getting across the ground. Mm. Maybe it's a present up to the wing for a bailout kick. Then he's getting deeper inside. That's where the goals are coming from. So clearly he's had quite a dominant display. Throw in Ollie Dempsey as well. This, mm-hmm. this Some sort of stat line here. Oh my goodness. Five goals, 29 disposals and 13 marks from Ollie Dempsey. Yeah. We've seen him at AFL level. Um, maybe that's another opportunity for him on Saturday night against Port. Absolutely. I mean, he's clearly been – he hasn't had his opportunity at AFL level in recent weeks, so he's had some sort of sustained time in, in that team and um, clearly the better for it. Just knows how to assert his influence and – I reckon it's time he probably probably comes back up. We well, you're bringing him back in form too by by the yeah, looks of that yeah, with with a game like that. It's not that you know he can play good footy, but he's just struggling a little bit in the VFL. Mm-hmm. He's clearly in really good form. Others as well, Meg Brandon Parfit, forty touches with six clearances. Sam Manigola, who we've spoken about yeah. over, over the last couple of weeks on this podcast, twenty eight touches. Mitch Nevitt, to his credit, has just continued to play yep. good football, whether he's in. The AFL, or he jumps back down at a yeah. VFL. He had 28 touches with 11 marks and seven tackles. And Sav found the footy, 20 yeah. touches, plus 16 hit outs. So that's that little look yeah, at maybe yeah, the, yeah. the ruck potentially. So there are players in form ready to go. There are. I, <laughs> I was just thinking of Sav. I saw a photo of him from his um, uh, VFL and he was holding the footy. His entire hand was... <laughs> The ball was covered. The entire ball was covered. <laughs> I was like, you would mark everything. So I just think his, I mean, like his sheer size is hugely a, is, is hugely, is likely a huge help in the middle. We know wherever he plays. So I'd like to see him in the middle a bit. I don't know. I look at these p- players and I think, what are we, are we trying to find two spots in the team or, or five or six? Well, that, that's a good question because two definitely with injuries and, and your point about size is a good one because mm-hmm. we are losing two big players. Mm-hmm. Blitz is big. Hawks big. It's pretty obvious they want some sort of size, but I don't know if they necessarily go size and size to replace yep. those. Maybe it is that different look of a smaller, quicker um, type lineup. Particularly considering the opposition, and we've probably got beaten at ground level on the weekend just gone, plus, you know, in our back line. But we're now looking at a Port Adelaide side whose midfield is not huge, but is hugely combative and yes. hugely effective and, yep. and, and hugely quick. And also, even. Um, with our forward line, as Hawk goes out, uh, a lear, a lear. Um, mm-hmm. not our place to comment on, on, on that, what happened there, but he's gone into concussion yeah. protocols, um, so he'll miss the game. Uh, obviously, uh, just a high-quality player for Port Adelaide. So it's a bit of height out of their back line, yeah. quality height out of their back line, meaning that we could have a different look. Yeah. We could really just buzz around a little bit at Jez's feet. Um, mm-hmm. Gary Rowan is that 
other tall, but as we know, he's lightning quick, yeah. um, super dangerous at ground level. So I, I kind of get excited about while we're forced to do it, um, have a little bit of a different play around. What could work um, as we build? And then, yeah, of course, Tom Hawkins comes back yeah. in in a few weeks' time. It's it's fantastic. Um, I I don't know if they go so so form would suggest two weeks, two losses that others will possibly make way. Mm-hmm. Um, but with a couple of key players out, I don't know about unsettling the team and we end up making five changes or anything like that. Maybe there's a third change or a fourth change, but I think Chris Scott's always pretty keen to trust the group and yeah. say, hey, we'll, f- we'll fight our way out of this little down patch at the moment. Yeah, and I think um, uh, what I'm trying to say, the what excites me about some of those players coming in is the freshness that they provide. I think I watched the weekend and I thought, oh, it, it's to me f- across the board it looked a little bit like the culmination of a season's worth of um, – chasing the game and yep. sort of um, uh, not being able to rest your key players like you would like to and the load that they're carrying, um, whether that results in, um, you know, physical output changing or decision-making. I thought, you know, well, we're trying to force the issue a little bit here. So to get people in that are in good form, um, excited about what they can bring to the team and getting an opportunity at AFL level at a stage in the season when you probably wouldn't expect to, um, yep. Is, is really exciting. So I think a bit of zip would be great. Would be great. A um, couple other quick updates before we uh, before we move on fully to um, building up to Port Adelaide. Uh, Simon Lloyd also spoke about a couple of injury updates. Sam Simpson um, trying to come back from the surgery on the hand tendon. He had oh, his someone get him a break. Oh, we? I know. He, oh. Well, we're both huge fans of Sam yeah. Simpson, the way he plays and what he brings to the team, his creativity, he brings people into into the game. Um, he, he'll he go into full training. So he's having his splint removed on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he'll go into full training, which is great. So now he can start building back. Um, Jai Clark and Cam Guthrie are progressing well in their respective programs for the foot injuries. Jai is now doing the Alter G. Have you have you been on that before? I have. So I have. Just for those who don't know, it's a treadmill with a whole big contraption around yeah. you that basically takes a certain percentage takes of your, load off. Or your, <laughs> yes, your weight off your running. Yeah. So you can run it maybe 50% weight. Oh, gosh, that would be lovely. My experience was not 50%. No. <laughs> um, that might be a bit much. Unfortunately, the, the trend that I've seen with it, I had a... Uh, had a navicular stress fracture a few years ago. Oh, That's, that was I my experience that. Um, on the OG. It's famous. It's a famous injury at this club, unfortunately. Yes, yes. Oh, um, terrible. That's great because that they're not always. Come they don't back always. From that. No, I yeah. know. I've got. I've got a teammate who's struggled in her recovery as well. But um, I was. I was good to go, and um, I thought, oh gosh, this seventy five percent of my body weight feels great. And then it was nineteen ninety five within a week. I was like, oh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Recovered too well here. <laughs> too quickly. Um, Cam Guthrie also, the update on him um, sounds sounds really promising. Doesn't uh, it? That he's talking as though it's in the coming weeks. Um, possibly, possibly. Maybe I'll get my hopes up here, but possibly before the home and away season ends. Get your hopes up and look, we may as well pencil him in for 10 coaches votes and another, you know, <laughs> he'll come back in in the form that he left. All Australian, BNF winning I don't know. <laughs> let's hope. Let's, let's hope. He's such an important player and such an important leader out on the field. Um, yeah. Saturday night, Meg, Port Adelaide at GMHBA Stadium. Huge, huge game. Mm. Um, just And just quickly for those who are coming to the game, and there'll be yeah. heaps and it'll be – because we know how big the game is. If you want to get here, um, maybe try the Park and Ride. So Park and Ride is available uh, this week. Patrons can park and ride the bus to our stadium from two locations via Cotton On Head Office. So mm-hmm. that's the corner of Separation Street and Shepherd's Court in North Geelong. Just enter via... Huge car park there. Huge, huge. car park. Enter via Separation Street for that one. Or also the Geelong race course. So the other side of the ground, uh, corner of Breakwater Road and Fowler Street in Breakwater. Enter via Breakwater Road. Um, buses will depart approximately every 15 minutes from 5 p.m., the last bus to depart will be 7 p.m. So 5 p.m. is when it's heading off. Then it'll be every 15 minutes, last bus at 7 o'clock. So you can get here on time for the first bounce. Post-game, buses will, buses will depart approximately every 15 minutes from 10 p.m. until 11.30 p.m. There is reduced car parking here. 
uh, in the Cadinia Park precinct yeah. because of all the construction work. So maybe if you're keen to come to the game, you could utilise that park and ride. You could. I might have to. I was just I had a smile on my face then because I have I have a park, Lee. Not at the Cadinia Park precinct, but I'm not going to disclose where it is. <laughs> but it's clearly one that people think is a no-standing zone, but it's not a no-standing zone on, after 12.30 on a Saturday. Ooh. And I, I tell you what... Don't every week I'm running late to the game and every week, there it is. Do not. Do not <laughs> oh, no, tell where I'll that tell is. That is there. gold. Oh, it's gold. That is pure <laughs> it gold. It is gold. I love the fact you sussed that out. And it uh, also one where it looks like you're parking across a driveway, but it's no longer a driveway. Ah, oh, it's... Very clever. Very I'll good. report back. I always said you're a good decision maker. <laughs> this, is, this is excellent. Um, it, it's... I mentioned it is a huge game Saturday night mm. for our finals chances, um, but also for Port Adelaide. Oh, isn't it crazy? You sort of think this... Four weeks ago, you're thinking, pencil this in, this is going to be a huge game. Both teams are going to be in a ripping form. Are the Cats going to make the top four? Yeah. He's put all this Port's sort of stuff. Port's locked away top two. Yeah, not the case, but no less important. No, three-game losing streak for the for the power, losing to Carlton, then Collingwood in that classic game. Yeah. And then, unbelievably, in the showdown, um, getting smashed mm. by, by the Adelaide Crows. So they'll want to bounce back. They don't. Have a great record here at GMHBA Stadium. They've only won once at KP since 2007. Um, I do remember that game late in 2007 when oh, yeah? Dom Cassisi kicked the winning goal oh, after Gaz had put us in front. I was sitting in the stand, the old Rostro stand down here. Um, myself, Joel, and I think Jimmy were rested. I was going to say you were sitting in the stand. Yeah, on the eve of finals. Just put that one in. So the only time that they've won here is... Because Lingy was rested with well, Joel Selwood. They're your words, Meg, not oh, mine, right, but that's okay. where I was hoping we were going to go yeah, with that. No, no, no we've I'm, arrived. I remember cracking it so badly at oh, Bomber no. when he said, I'm just going to let, I just want to freshen you up. Had it's he banged the wind in his head? No, it wasn't about banging the wind. It was we couldn't change our position. It was fine. He goes, I just yeah. want to get you this week, have a hit out yeah. next week, and then lead into finals. Yeah. And I just always wanted to play, oh, and no. I was so angry at him. I was oh. fuming. And I he's, he just like, just settle down. It'll be all right. You've got bigger fish to fry in the next month or I so. I can't deal with that when it's like rest from a training session. <laughs> I just would not manage in a game. So lucky we only play a 10-game season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Port Adelaide, their midfield, you mentioned it before. Uh, mm. Connor Rosie's an out-and-out star. Zach Butter's one of the best in the competition. A Brownlow medalist in Ollie Wines. Um, there's quality in there. Mm. Um, but... When, when you look at them, Ollie Wines is a bigger bodied midfielder, mm. but Connor Rosie and Zach Butters are still young yeah, and can be lighter bodies, but they, they do have that incredible run through there. That, to me, feels like where we have to get it right. Now, I know without Blitz, it, it, it's, we lose someone from there, but you know, Tanner Bruin, Max Holmes, um, mm. Paddy gets back to, to really getting going. That's where we're going to have to stand up this Saturday night. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And if you think back to our round, whatever it was, clash at Adelaide Oval, we felt we did match. We had a first half where we matched it with them in the middle and were on top, lost Tanner and Danger that game. Yeah. And it didn't, well, we all know it didn't turn out too well. But I surely think, and I haven't discussed this with them, but though the players that you mentioned are of a similar, maybe a year or two younger age bracket to the Port Adelaide Stars, and I think you'd be, in your own head, you'd be thinking, all right, well, the competition's talking about, you know, the young Port Adelaide superstars. I want to be in that conversation, and this is a time where I, you know, forget the older generation of stars that both teams have had. This is, you know, up for bragging rights, this one. Yeah, 100%, and and trusting that if you do get them, you Mm. do get a hold of them, we got a forward line that can kick plenty of goals. Ooh, now, yeah. I know Jez, what do you kick one goal? Five on the weekend. It's still six shots at goal. Yeah. So Jez flips that and there's four or five goals for Jez. Yeah. Um, we've got a forward line that is still super dangerous and can be. Um, Brad Close, Tyson Stengel, Grian Myers, all of yeah. these, Ollie Henry. He, Ollie keeps it in the scoreboard. Yeah, different people. So... And, and our back line is rock solid. Mm. Um, it's got Sam De Koning playing well. Zach Guthrie's playing superb footy. Tom Stewart is a, is a great player. Jack Henry. So, you go, well, yes, it is going to come down to the midfield. Yeah. But as you're saying, well, why not? Let's take not? down a couple of other good young midfielders yep. and let's flip it on them, knowing that if we do that, we probably win the game. Yeah. And, we're, and we're back on track for making finals. 
Good, I'll be locking you in for the pregame speech. <laughs> All good. I, I, nothing to add. No notes. Oh, very good. It'll be a huge game. Um, I know it's going to be it's going to be a big crowd. I reckon the crowd's going to oh, feel yeah. it too. It's a game of genuine consequence. Um, it'll be busy around this part of the ground, Meg. <laughs> it'll be busy. <laughs> How's that for a segue? I was, I was, you've caught me unawares. <laughs> and where, where am I? Okay. <laughs> Life is busy enough without... No car parking at Kid in Your Park. <laughs> no, life is busy enough without more life admin. That's why Morris is now bringing their personal approach to personal finance. Their team is here to help you finance your next lifestyle asset with their free person to person service designed to find a finance deal that works best for you. Call Morris today on 1300 for Morris or head to morrisfinance.com. Dot au. As I try and perfectly segue you, I probably should give you some warning. I'm no, about to I do need it. to just be, I need to be on. No, I should have given you a oh, heads up. I, I tell you, I'm not no, no word of a lie. Morris were guests at Scotty's press conference last week because he yes, broke the game record, record breaking. And I'm sitting two rows behind them, looking at them, being like, fans of the pod. Yeah. I wonder if we should discuss my segments. <laughs> I'm sure I left, them, I left them to it. I'm sure they're massive fans of the pod, and we do appreciate their support. Uh, what else we do appreciate is the questions that we get every single week. We love the listeners. We love the engagement. Uh, we've got another bunch of questions that have been sent in, Meg. Uh, yeah. I'd love to get to them next. Let's get to them. Tickets are now available for the 2023 Team of All raffle, where one lucky winner will be driving home in a brand new Ranger Wildtrak V6, thanks to Ford. Visit raffle.geelongcats.com.au for your chance to share in $87,162 worth of prizes, including 2024 match day experiences, AFL and AFLW team signed Guernseys, Kaji Greaves Medal Night, or season launch tickets, and loads more. Tickets are now available from just $10, and all proceeds from the sale of the raffle tickets will go towards the Geelong Cats Community Foundation. The raffle is open until Tuesday, 5th of September 2023, to residents age 18 plus in Vic, New South Wales, ACT, and NT. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. It is great to have you with us on to the final bell brought to you by Morris. Really appreciate their support um, to br- allow us, Meg, to have allow a chat us, each week. Yeah. You and I to catch up, but also to uh, talk football. And talk about all things cats, including fan questions. Yeah, the fans. We do have a few coming in, which we really appreciate. Please keep those questions coming in. Ali's got a good one for us. Who's your favourite commentator? Oh, uh, we uh, <laughs> special commentator? No, nah, let's go yeah. with play-by-play caller. I think Ali means because, I mean, it's clear who you're uh, obviously obviously, answer would be special commentator. Obviously, Daisy Pierce. A hundred percent. Ali, let's go play by play caller. Yes. Um, Radio or TV, doesn't matter. Uh, Anthony Hudson. Ah. Yeah, I really, yep. I, oh, I, it's, it's, Hutto, Waitley, loved it when they were together. Um, but I just think 13, I think, yeah, I just love, I, I just love him. I just think he's fantastic. Excellent. He's very, I don't mind Dwayne down here too. Dwayne as well. Yeah, yep, I don't mind nice. Dwayne. Yeah. Um, I, Ali, will choose to not answer that question oh. because I have to work in the box with, be yes. alongside all of these people, and yes. I think they're all magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about have you got a favourite call of all time? Uh, a favourite line. Favourite line of all time. Oh, of all time, Sandy Roberts, mm-hmm. 1989. Geelong versus Collingwood. Mm-hmm. First time, not the first time I went to the MCG, but the first time I went to a a truly heaving mm. Geelong Collingwood MCG yeah. with Dad. So I was eight years old. Yeah. Footy was magical, and it was just this ah oh, uh, the true yeah. coliseum of yeah. just everything happening. The color of the Collingwood fans and everything like that. Gary Ablett Sr. was just lighting up and played the most magnificent game and the Cats win the game. We go back, we watch the replay. It's, oh, that, yeah. it's that one where Gaz Sr. flies for the ball, doesn't mark it, it hits the ground and he just immediately recovers in turns, sort of like pushes aside, parts the seas of two Collingwood players, picks up on the run from about 45 and Sandy delivers what more can you say right at the end of it as Gary sort of, Taps his neck. Loves it. Oh, I could just replay that <laughs> over and over again as he call he calls it Ablett and he's like, "What more can you say?" And Sandy just delivers it perfectly. Yeah, nice. Oh, I, that footy's 
Footy's probably think, never th- better than when you're about eight or nine years of age. I think, <laughs> I, I think my favourite is probably a very sad Cats memory. <laughs> Before I was a fan of the Cats, I love, I see it, but I don't believe it. Oh. One of the great calls. By Hutto. Yeah. Mm. In, and just, can I just quarters? say. Who, was he commentating that game as well? Uh, he, quarters would have been. Does he call the. Yeah, with Channel he calls 10. The, I think he calls the centre bounce after that. Yes. Anyway. Um. Can I say too, now that I've I've worked closely in that space and get to know the people yeah. and how hard their job is that they do to follow the play and then go to there's an injury there and there, yep. plenty going on, but each of them are humans and mm. they've got their own love and passion of a particular Yay. football team. Oh, Hutto is a big cats fan. Big cats fan. I know. Loves the cats and he could call that Nick Davis goal so perfectly. Despite his heart probably breaking, breaking at the same time. Yeah, that's a great call. I love the trend at the moment to have where they're publishing the vision of the commentators. I love that stuff. <laughs> like the um, vision of Waitley and Hutto in the qualifying final, and I think I think Jared's calling and Hutto's just giving it the fist pumps. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I'm glad that though that is a n- really new thing because if you rewound oh, yeah. to <laughs> approximately 2013 preliminary final oh, no. and I was calling in the 3RW box at the time um, and Sean Burgoyne unfortunately started lighting up against the Cads. I may have lost a few pens to the other side of the uh, commentary <laughs> box and I reckon my notes got overturned and um, yes, I would have looked like a little petulant child at that yeah, stage. Yeah, it's really culturally <laughs> an interesting, not to keep going on in this question, but I know in other sports it's becoming a thing that the bias is coming through in, in and whether, you know, supporters like that or not. I think there's a time and you know, time and space for getting to around getting yeah, around to your have own you, team. To have passion, you know, 100%. you love the game. Um, do you know how hard it is to flip like an entire desk and throw things across a commentary box but do it silently? I appreciate that's, it would be difficult. That's an art form. <laughs> I can't even drink a coffee on this podcast without <laughs> messing it up, so uh, thank you for that question, Ali. I uh, really appreciate uh, you listening and, uh, and writing your question in. Aaron has one. Uh, why do you think we are a vastly different side to last year? Have sides worked us out? Mm, now, do we uh, – what's the word? Um, do we contest – this isn't the right word, but the question itself. Um, Aaron, are we a vastly different side? No, so, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. So, Aaron, I don't think we're a vastly different side. I think what we are not – is a sufficiently healthy team yeah, across the course of the this year with with real genuine continuity, not just a couple of weeks mm-hmm. with a, with a, a full team, multiple weeks, and players getting across the ground. I, I think what we're seeing is why it is so difficult to go back to back. Absolutely, and I I think when you you're wondering whether sides have worked us out, I think to take it a, a relatively simple concept like. If you bring the ball to ground in the Cats' back line, yep. you stand a chance. Correct. That's nice. We all know that. Whether you can do that is another matter and that's dependent on midfield and all those things. So I think um, knowing how to win and being able to win are two different things and, and teams have been able to get on top of us because of the reasons that you mentioned. Yep. And you think – okay, think back to last year just for a second – Geelong makes a really brave call to take Patrick Dangerfield out of the team. Yeah. Um, potentially hurts their short-term form yep. to get a long-term result. Now, as each time the Cats won mm-hmm. without Paddy, gave the coaches more breathing room to say, and the medical staff, the fitness staff, actually, no, we can stay with that uh, three-week plan, four-week yep. plan, six-week plan to leave him out. The wins were on the board. Um, can we take a player out there? Do we just play a half game there and sub that yep. player there? So that health in September was mm-hmm. just outstanding from the yep. group. Um, short of, unfortunately, for Maxi Holmes, an actual in-game injury, yep. everybody else was not only healthy, they were fresh and flying yeah, across yeah, the yeah. ground. When you lose the games we lost at the start of the year and we dropped one here and dropped one there and that play, those few players are out, there was more load asked upon the other players, what, what you end up with is no longer the luxury of yeah. management. Absolutely. It's, we need wins now and we, we have to win so that player has to come back and it, 
it impacts the team. Um, and combined with the fact that every single team in the competition is also chasing and hunting us and looking at us and understanding what we did in the final series, where to stop them, do all that. So just constantly at you, just chips away at it enough that um, you come back to the pack a little bit. But that's part of being in an elite competition. Yeah, I agree. I still think, I mean, y- y- this is, you know, futile to, to sort of speak in these terms, but if you were able to transplant the form that, the cats were in last year to the present day we would be winning more i think that health so i i you know i still back the coach and the players and everyone in when they say our best is good enough i'm like absolutely it is our ability to grasp it is you know hasn't been there consistently um look at at, just to take the focus off us for a second meg uh, the cats melbourne last year yes so they win a premiership 2021 at round nine or ten last year it just Everybody was saying it's Melbourne, yeah. Daylight, then this other group of teams. Yeah. What stopped them was partially teams studying them to the nth degree and, and working little things out. And then the health of their group. Yeah. Petrarca's got a sore knee. Max Gorn can't get across yeah. the ground as well as you. The, the, the effort it takes to win one premiership mm. is so immense. It does have a flow-on effect to the following season. and. But not even for the Cats, it's it's not, yes, we won last year, but you've been at the top. Uh, you know, over the past five years, past ten years, you would have played a whole extra season's worth of football in yes. that time yep. with, with all the post-season matches. Definitely. So, yeah, there's a huge load there. And I do want to go back to what I said there, and I'm not meaning to suggest that our game hasn't developed from last year, but, but that form and things are, are not what they were at the similar stage of the season. Um, I hope that doesn't sound like we're making excuses as well, though, Meg, because it... Yeah. I don't think it's excuses. I think it's just reality. Yeah, for sure. No, we're not denying the truth of the matter in that, you know, we're not where we would like to be. Yeah, exactly right. Hopefully that answers it all right, Aaron. And I think the really cool thing is there's still an opportunity to bring ourselves out of that for this year. But, and I'm not not saying this Mm -hmm. season's done and dusted, but then also the way that they can use this year as a launching pad to go again yes. in the in the future seasons is um is certainly there. Uh, Con Healy poses this question, Meg. Is Blitzarv's loss the biggest possible loss we could have had out of any squad member? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to say I put him above Hawkins, Cameron, Stewart, those types yes, of players. Isn't it? But I think we saw at different times throughout the year when Reese was out and Blitz was forced to play more ruck, yeah. what we lost around the ground in the yeah. midfield had, a, had an impact on us. And, I mean, you just don't replace Mark Blitz halves. You, 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 you add different players and you can try mm-hmm. a few different elements, but he's, he's one of the most special um, types of players you could have in the entire competition. Isn't he? I mean, yeah, you... you <laughs> In terms of weaponry, he possibly is one of one of the biggest ones to lose. But yeah, I, I I completely agree with you. It sort of remains to be seen. But you're right. There was a patch in the year where we didn't have we hadn't lost him, but we didn't have the version of him that was possibly most useful to us as a team, um, as good as he was in the ruck. So we hope not. But it, it remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah. No. I and I just think of I think of what he did in last year's final series, oh, yeah. and I can't help but going back there. I, 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 I've said this before, and I know I'm not suggesting for one second that um, Isaac shouldn't have won the Norm Smith, and probably Paddy was next mm-hmm. in line. But Blitz's importance around the early stages when yep. the game was there and the whips were cracking around that grand final was nothing short of unbelievable. And a couple of weeks ago you started to see a sort of, was it the Melbourne game where he, he started to kick goals again this yep. season? So, which is what he was doing in that, in that grand final. Um, I will say that I feel like we've proven that we can, we've won games without Stewie, without, yep. without Jez. Hopefully we can do the same without Blitz, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, another one from Don slash Seb, so maybe two listeners, thank you for this one, is Phoenix Foster ready to debut? How is Phoenix travelling? Because I'm, I, I haven't, uh, admittedly, I don't, I don't get to watch heaps of live VFL. Mm-hmm. I try and catch up on a, a little bit of the highlights and obviously track how the team's going. Um, I was drafted with his uncle. Uh, oh, yeah. He's in the same year as me, Daniel Foster. Um, so we played a handful of games together. So I've always got a little bit of an mm-hmm. eye on Phoenix. Um, what's the report? He's, he's a pretty special sort of athlete, isn't he? I know. 
know. I am the same as you that I haven't seen enough of him, but I see him in the corridors and the training tracks and the highlights reel and I think, whoa, yeah. what an athlete. Um, do you know what? I think what is ready for AFL level is his name. <laughs> Phoenix Foster, <laughs> what a name. And his look. The long sleeve, the socks up. Socks up, He's, I like that. I mean, dress for the job, the job you want, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, – no, that's probably not being serious enough about his football, which is uh, really promising. But I think – is he playing a bit in the back line as well? Yeah, but it, yep. it, to me it sounds – and cr- please correct me if I'm wrong – that his athleticism, mm-hmm. his, his, his talents, his, uh, his attributes probably are getting towards AFL level yep. standard. But what – will come but needs to continue to evolve is that understanding of all the the, the structural side the yep. mental side the running pattern side the yep. um what the whole unit of the team is doing yep. and once he gets a comfort level with that and his education on the game is what i'm probably trying to say once that catches up to that athleticism then it certainly appears like we've got an AFL player on our hands. Yeah, knowledge of the game, knowledge in the game. That's what we. Uh, that's what the saying yes, is. That's what, we, that's what we speak about in our in our program. I don't know if that's what the saying is, um, but certainly. And, and if it if it is in the back line, then that he's looking to break through. As we've said, ours is, is is pretty solid. And if you're looking at the forward line, I think, you know, as we said earlier, Shannon Neal's probably possibly next in line for that opportunity. But um, it's all very promising, and and just the beginning when you're as tall and athletic and, and big as he is. Yeah, so Don and Seb, let's hope uh, Phoenix isn't too far away. I don't know if it'll be this season, um, given uh, Meg's right, Shannon and Ollie, probably Ollie mm, Dempsey, oh, I know yeah. different size players are probably looking at that forward line and that back line's pretty settled as we hopefully head into finals. But let's hope Phoenix continues with his progression and his development and that debut won't be too far away as we um, perhaps head into uh, next season for him. Um, this one's not a question, Meg. This one's just a <laughs> statement, but I've got to read it out. Nice Go pump on. up. Uh, not a question, but just want to give love to the increased women's footy content this year and to Meg Mac. That's very kind. Um it's not disclosed who wrote who wrote that in. So thank you for just putting um, that in there yourself, there, Lingy. Much appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it is um, it is outstanding having you as part of this podcast. And um, the cool thing is, I turn up each week, and I just know that we're going to be ready to go. We have a great time, and I I I love the love for women's footy. And I must say that I've managed not to mention the Matildas so far this podcast, but. I am reminded when events like this happen about how important and, and fulfilling and exciting I find visibility of women's sport and the way it's captured the nation is is so exciting. I mean, we're running around in our um, Matilda's Guernseys at training most most days this oh, week. Nice. And even things like I was talking to Lloydie downstairs, Simon so Lloyd, about um, you know, the parallels between how the Matildas are going and the pressure that they were under in that game. You're missing your star player. The coach is under pressure. How's their game style going? And they got it done four 0 So I hope that's just been slipped into the team meeting this week because um, you know inspiration is rife at the moment. Yeah. It's yeah. it was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Because the, Ni- oh, the Nigeria, Nigeria game oh, no, was was a shock, great. and and yeah, there was a lot. Of, there was a bit of panic from the outside, yep. but internally, clearly, they just the focus was there. Oh my gosh, bang, I just love it. I love nil. the. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> consuming all the press conferences, all the interviews and um, how determined they were after that Nigeria game and how it flowed through um, their media appearances and then into their performance. I just loved it. Do we have – we don't have information yet on their opponents. Yes, it's 8 o'clock on Monday against Denmark. It is Denmark, locked in. Fantastic. If anyone's got tickets to the Sydney game, <laughs> I am here for them. <laughs> I will fly out of Avalon again. (laughs) Beautiful, beautiful. Hit up Meg Mag for that one. Um, Whoever sent that comment in before, maybe they've got a spare ticket for you. Maybe they do. Thank you, Sam Kerr, for putting that in. (laughs) The respect and it's mutual. (laughs) Uh, Brilliant. Um, No, you're absolutely right. I uh, I couldn't agree more. It is exciting. There's exciting sport everywhere to watch at the moment. Loving it. Um, Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I've just got to put this in. So I've got to take some responsibility and I'm sorry, but... I was talking to the sporting gods over the weekend. I might have left this game here and I was like, do you know what? I, this is post-Nigeria game, pre-Cameroon um, 
Canada. Who do we be? Canada. Um, and I was like, I was in a state and I was like, do you know what? You can have that Geelong game. It had already happened. <laughs> you can have that Geelong game. I will go so far as to say, you can have the fifth test. Oh, Meg. I hang, know. On. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang <laughs> on. As long as the Tillies get it done. <laughs> and then I'm watching, I was like watching the Tillies and I was like, let's go. And every time I flicked over, every time we scored a goal, we lost a wicket. <laughs> so um, I, uh, it's all my fault, everyone. Meg, I love the Matildas and what they're achieving. <laughs> but my two number one loves are footy and cricket. Yeah. <laughs> the Cats and the Australian <laughs> Test Team. Yeah. I'm not sure that's a trade that I'm okay with you making, all right? <laughs> I just we'll see. If they win the tournament, yep. maybe. Okay, I can cop that. If it's a World Cup win yep. for Australia. I've sold. I've sold. Oh, oh, my gosh. Boy, I didn't, re- I, I didn't uh, request the ball change, I must say. Oh, don't get me started. Sorry, I'm glad already. that Ricky Ponding was very fired up about that one. Yeah. Um, any questions for uh, next week, keep them coming in. If you want to just give Meg some feedback about that trade that yeah. she just made, hey, feel free because yeah. you've got my back. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> um, before we finish up, though, just quickly want to say, as I mentioned, we are brought to you every week by Morris. Uh, we really appreciate their support. And for years, Morris has been supporting businesses and the community to generate success together. Now... They are bringing their personal approach to personal finance. Cars, boats, caravans, motorbikes, jet skis, whatever you want. They are all about getting you out there living life. Let their team of finance specialists take on the life admin of arranging your finance so you can get on with life. Call Morris today on 1300 for Morris or head to morrisfinance.com.au. Meg, we better finish up. It is a massive game Saturday night against Port Adelaide. As I mentioned before, if you want to use that park and ride yep. facility, the Cotton On Head Office in corner of Separation Street, Shepherd's Court, North Geelong, or Geelong Racecourse, corner of Breakwater Road and Fowler Street, Breakwater. Uh, buses will depart from 5pm every 15 minutes with the last bus leaving at 7pm. Post-game, the buses will depart approximately every 15 minutes from 10pm until 11.30pm. Could be a great way to get to the game with the reduced capacity of car parking around the Cadinia Park Start precinct. Start those chants on the way, I reckon. Yes. Get those bus, you know, team spirit. I did The roar did go up in the third quarter on the weekend. Ooh, we tried. Yeah. Yep. The crowd tried to lift the boys, so more of that, please. I know, they'll lift them this week. Um, it is a huge one, 7.25 p.m., uh, here at GMH BA Stadium, I'll be Working. sitting on the boundary for Channel 7, oh, yeah. um, pretending to be neutral as yeah. best I can. Good luck with that. Where are you sitting? Uh, I'm in the enclosure this week, actually. I'm nice. hosting the Irish contingent. Um, so, just I think it's just down just here. Down there, just yeah, just down seats. from the Morris box here. Yeah. Um, no more trading at Geelong game for no, any I know, other no, it's sport. Done. It's done. Thank you. Uh, great to see you again, Meg. Um, Me too, we'll, by the time I see you next, will you have done the match sim? No, I'll be gearing up for it. Gearing up for it. All right, fantastic. Well, c- good luck with the rest of pre-season uh, heading into that match sim. We'll be back together next week. Yeah, we will.